Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to this month's fabulous workshop with the Get It Done gang. We've got a couple of very cool members here. Um, we are talking sales pages all this month, um, sales page fundamentals, um, how to create and con uh, convert with confidence. Um, it's kind of important. Hello to everybody here live and to everybody um, watching on replay. Welcome. This is going to be quite the event. So, <laughs> so let's get stuck in and don't forget um, there are, there's plenty of time to ask questions. If you need anything, just stop me, ask your question, ask away, take plenty of notes. I'll make time at the end for questions too. And once we've gotten through the bulk of the information, then we're going to jump into um, lovely Sally's new soon to be launched website to see if we can give it a bit of a tinker. Um, and if you are interested in having this happen to your own work, maybe we should chat. So we'll talk about that later too. All right, shall we dive in? Let's. Okay, I'm going to share my screen because that's what we do. All right. Oh, which one did I share? I'm going to stop sharing because now I just had a moment of, no, I did share the right one. Woo! <laughs> Gosh, it's been a long day already. All right, sales page fundamentals. Who am I? I am Lizzie McCauley. I am the chief copywriter over at Write It. I'm a launch copy specialist. I help you figure out who you are, what you're doing, who you're doing it for, and help you devise all of the elements that you will need to launch your business, your product, your service successfully. Um, I am a bit of a tennis try hard, love it, crap at it, love it anyway. Mum of two, tiny but very charming lunatics, um, a bit of a cynic, lover of dresses with pockets and yes, admittedly, I'm not as good a cook as I would like to be. So, you know, that's some very basic stuff about me. I would love to hear about you. Hit me back um, if you have anything you would like to share with me. Um, this is a really interactive session today, so feel free to drop comments. I'm more than happy to hear them. Oh, Sally has sound for a bit. I will have to. Sally's a bloody great cook. Good for you, Sally. I am very pleased to hear it. <laughs> great. I like that you are sneaking sound bits. Oh, and now I have a mag out my window watching my progress and expecting food to come their way <laughs> all right let's crack on shall we so sales pages now i did post this earlier in the month you may have seen it you may not what's the difference between a sales page and a landing page so a landing page oh there's two magpies at my window now staring expectantly um <laughs> john lynn opens a bag of salad really well with like with scissors, yeah, that's some resourceful behavior right there. Let's do it, John Lynn. <laughs> Perfect. All right, landing pages. I will focus and I will ignore the very hungry magpies out my window. Um, landing pages are used for lead gen. They're quite short. They're usually for um, a free or a low ticket item. So for instance, anybody who's registered for this um, session went to my landing page and it's short. And it's to the point and um, it doesn't really have much beyond like capturing information. Um, there, there's not much to say and it's very, shush you birds, um, it's very much at the top of the sales funnel. So this is where we're getting people in. So they're going to get to know you. They're going to start to understand your vibe. Um, whereas sales pages is kind of the reverse of all of that. So the sales page is used who knew for selling your stuff um, and you can have long form or short form. And generally speaking, the longer it is realistically, the more expensive your product's going to be. Um, there isn't, you know, a hard and fast rule on how long a sales page should be, but um, uh, generally speaking, let's say the more expensive your, your product, service, business, whatever is, um, probably the more explaining you're going to need to do and the more convincing of your audience of, of like allaying their fears, overcoming objections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of important to note on a sales page. Um, anything on a sales page is for selling, therefore it's a paid experience. So you'll need to have that kind of um, what we call it, uh, a sales journey mapped out as well. Like you'll need um, payment systems 
in tow, most likely, unless it's more about um, having an application process, which is also a different way you can use it. So um, that's actually a way to differentiate yourself and maybe elevate your, your services, yeah, especially if it's a service rather than a product, is to have um, an application process apply or go on the wait list for the next open opening, you know, next intake. Um, and it's very much the bottom of the funnel. So once you've got someone in through your landing page and they've consumed all of your good stuff, they'll move down the sales funnel, get to know you, get to know you, get to know you, definitely want your stuff. And at the bottom of the funnel, that is where the buying decisions are made. So comes down right to the bottom there. So that is kind of the fundamentals of the difference between one and the other. Okay, hope that makes sense to you. Um, yeah, so let's, I'll just run over the elements that I really need focused on through your sales page, and then I'm going to explain them as we go along. So we need captivating headings and subheadings, which will, I'll show you some cool examples of that. We need a compelling argument for them buying. So what's in it for the customer? Why would they want to buy your product or service beyond anybody else's? And what makes you the best choice? for the job. We need captivating imagery. Um, and I know I've put a slash there, but and videos. Video is a very, very powerful tool when it comes to building the best possible sales page. Um, what else we need? Clear calls to action. Buy my stuff, buy it now, but you know, in a more elegant way. And I'll get to examples of that. And, and maybe we can workshop um, some ideas at the end. If we have some time, we need a clear, clear pricing structure. And what, like, this is where the features would come in rather than the benefits is what do they get? And you do need to be quite specific about it because um, you want to create those, those solid expectations and boundaries around what you are providing and what they get and what they don't get. Also, that's kind of important because um, people will run with it if they can, or if they're not sure, uncertainty is not a very helpful um, thing to be creating through our sales pages. We need social proof. So these are trust indicators. So, you know, um, this is things like your testimonials, um, you know, oh, look, I'll dive into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. We need a bio. So people need to understand about you. Um, and why you, especially in a service capacity, but also in a, a product-based business as well, what does it mean for you to be delivering this thing that they, you want them to buy? Like, why do you do it? They need to get a kind of flavor of why you do what you do and why your product or service is different than, than anybody else's out there. Because let's, like, let's pretend it's you know, soap that you're selling Soap's fairly common. Why should I buy your soap over someone else's soap? So that's kind of why we, we want a short, compelling bio in there too. We need um, an epic layout. It needs to be eye-catching. It needs to kind of guide your brain all the way down until they find the pricing elements. Or you could find the kind of readers that want to get straight to the pricing elements and they will need to be like very obvious and you know the buy button needs to be very obvious so we'll get to that too um and the last thing that i would encourage including is um some objection solving faqs so you as the business owner will probably come across some fairly standard objections i can't afford it i have to check with someone i don't understand um, I'm afraid to do xyz thing and you need to come up um, with not only what the objections are but how you would um, argue against them I guess in the nicest possible way so let's start with some captivating headings and subheadings so th this is just some examples I've pulled from my own page from a client's page and from my mentor's page just so you can see um, some some different approaches so we've got get it done the check-in so this is the thing that's being sold that that al almost always needs to be the top toppy top 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 thing um, that we're talking about needs to instantly intrigue the customer. Um, headline sales page headlines are typically longer 
than those of landing pages because you know we're, we're trying to do more with it there's a bit more of an energy exchange isn't there we need to give more information rather than just kind of give our snappy little hook um yeah and we need to also kind of give them an idea of what they're going to be reading about and what they're going to get out of it you know like really have a professional copywriter in your back pocket oh yes please um circle back if you need more information on that huh. um, <laughs> This is a great opportunity to talk about that. Um, the headline should be an explanatory sentence or statement that immediately tells your customer um, the benefits of what you're about to read, which is kind of what I just said. Uh, it will be their, um, what will be their greatest advantage or change if they buy your product or service. And if you don't know that yet, my goodness, please spend some time thinking about what that means for you and for your customers. Um, I would always, always encourage people to consider what their overarching outcome of working with you would be or buying your product if you're a product-based business. Um, here's another one. Um, yep, take control with Nicole Members Lounge. So again, you know exactly what you're buying as soon as you land on the page, helping your business flow and grow with clever system design and implementation. And who doesn't love a bit of rhyming in their headlines as well? Um, also, um, we'll come to this later, but right up top, there's a there's a handy little call to action because some people just want to buy. They don't they don't need all the extra fluff and information. They just want to dive straight in so provide your audience with as many opportunities as possible to say yes um so that's what nicole's done super well here um yep let's move on and this is my mentor so again amplify accelerator with suze chadwick you know what you're getting as soon as you land on the page like this is your opportunity to make a really solid impact so they need to get onto the page and understand what they're doing there and be encouraged to move through pages from then on so those are some sample um headings like right up the top this is what you'd expect to see and then sort of we move through and we'll talk about layout later on but here's some some other ideas like to break up the page and really make it clear um uh how can i say make it clear what they're getting out of uh, the, the thing that you're trying to sell. So, you know, for, for my customers, make progress every, every week on the projects that mean the most to you. For Nicole, fall back in love with your business as you develop your unique working style. Um, stop waiting to feel ready and take action. I'm cheering you on, high kicks included. Love it. In fact, I'd quite like to see Suze do a high kick because um, that, you know, who doesn't want to see that really. <laughs> and I'm here to show you what's possible. So it's really about talking directly to your, your reader, to your audience member. Okay. Um, let's see. What do we have next? Um, so your compelling argument for buying what well, and I, I kind of touched on this earlier and I will talk at length forever about selling the benefits rather than the features selling the outcome what will their life look like as a result of what you're offering only you will know the answer to that I will guess at the answer to that if I'm the one helping you with your copy but you're the expert in what you do and it's up to you to kind of sit with that and really understand how what you do will change their life um, it's probably easier to be delivered in short sentences use and using bullet points and using graphics so like it's kind of an ecosystem of argument there it's not just let's write an essay and hope someone reads it because that's kind of not how we digest information anymore sad but true um, content should be compelling and accurate with just enough words to get the point across uh, the more concise and direct you are which is what I'm saying here the more likely your customer will be to stay engaged with the material um, it's really about explanation rather than quantity quality rather than quantity right so we want to get as much information in there as possible without um losing the audience like, oh yeah that's cool i don't care that's really not the info like <laughs> that's not the reaction we want <laughs> Um, so it doesn't need to be clever either. Like a lot of people get stuck on, in developing copy that is very professional, very fancy, or it needs the right words. And my answer to that always, and Hannah and John Lynn and Sally will all know this from working with me in one way or another, is um, just be yourself. 
speak how you would speak, write how you would write, um, or write how you would speak, I should say, and don't try to be something that you're not because that comes across. And then there's a disconnect. Let's say somebody does get to your sales page and it's very like stiff and upright and very proper. And then they get to you and, and you're this warm, amazing person that just is so sweet and nice and that didn't come across in your copy there's going to be a disconnect in that isn't there so um or the opposite you've got like sweet and nice copy and then you're actually a bit you know of a pain <laughs> um when you get to be in person let's just you know there's 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 a person for everybody let's say there's a type of personality for every personality so if if you haven't got your messaging in line with yourself you're going to attract the wrong type of customer so that's really something to be very mindful of as you go along um yep we've talked about bullet points and write with pers a persuasive authoritative tone so yeah we're not going oh i hope it i hope it hope it works for you like no this is the solution because i am the expert and it's really important for you as the um, the person selling to thing to believe in your in yourself right to believe in your own authority and your own expertise because if you don't believe in it that's that's sure as anything going to come across in your work um, so I know that's kind of more of like a let's get in the right brain zone but that's, that's and a little out of copy but it's still kind of important um, I can't help with that. My, <laughs> I'm not the mindset lady. There's some really good ones about John Lynn included. Um, however, very important to get your head around stepping up as the expert in your area because you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be running a business, would you? Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, what else? Paint a picture with your words. What will the customer's lifestyle look like? Um, so... Who wants to drop in the comments maybe an example of, you know, a product that they're working on just now and how can we um, expand on the benefits of that? Anybody want to drop something in the comments? Looks like Hamish typing. No, nope. all right, um, I'll have to come up with something then. My brain's not working as fast as I would like. Um, yeah, okay, so let's pretend that Haina just, oh, here you go. You're shifting to, uh, Jolene says, I'm shifting from one-on-one -on -one to more of one-to-many. Yeah, so what's the benefit, let's say, of being part of a group to do what you do, Jolene? So we're, we're talking about energy healing, they're building community. And once they feel a part of something, they're developing safety. You know, there's, there's like mindedness and a sense of belonging. And what we're social creatures, what do we need more than a sense of belonging? You know, that, that safety is one of our fundamental needs, right? So um, moving from one to one to one to many is you get, okay, I can kind of argue both sides of the point I'm about to make. So stick with me. Um, yeah, there's multiple voices, you know, there's multiple wisdoms to draw upon as well. Also, you know, there's the opportunity to bond whether, yeah, more people to help. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, my, the rest of my brain went, yes, perhaps that's true, but then there's also too many cooks can be a thing too. But anyway, let's just focus on the benefits for <laughs> Just for example, um, also, you know, I can I can attest to the power of, you know, especially in the classes I deliver of multiple voices because there's multiple wisdoms within the group. You know, there's not just one voice and you do need more than one perspective. We don't want an echo chamber ever, you know, like people are so beautifully diverse and have different belief sets and, and that's actually a really rich pool of wisdom to draw upon rather than just here's what I think here's what you should do um, it's great to have that um, community and um, variety I suppose so there we go there's an example of our benefit of working within a group setting ah I found so much shaming in groups so I'm hesitant mm, tricky I don't uh, find better groups 
<laughs> no, I suppose, yeah, Hannah says yes to that too. Look, there really are some very supportive communities. And of course, you have your own community that you're building too, John Lynn. So, you know, um, you can be the thought leader in that space, you know, like how to develop a, a space that isn't about bringing people down, but building them up. You know, and that's what I'm quite proud of in our space as well. How could I state that as a benefit? How could I state, uh, yeah, there are some not so fun <laughs> and it's just finding your people for sure. And, and that starts with being really clear about your own personal voice and ethos and branding. We're getting a touch off topic, but let's, no, 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 it's totally important. Let's keep with it. Um, how could I state um, it's not a shaming? So, you, 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 I mean, you'd call it a safe space, wouldn't you, John Lynn? Like the benefit of it is that they have a soft place to land with people who understand your pain, your, what you're going through, you know, at a base level. So with that in mind, let's carry on because otherwise I will talk into my next appointment at 10.30. So... <laughs> Right, so after we've talked about the benefit, and genuinely I could talk about the benefits and stuff all damn day, so thank you very much for keeping me on task, everybody. Um, we need captivating images and videos. So videos on a sales page can increase conversions by over 80%. So even if you're not comfortable in front of the camera, get comfortable in front of the camera. It's extremely important to have that first impression be your smiling, happy face. Um, and also something else um, to consider with the picture you painted with your words right because we've got these beautiful words it needs to be reflected with your imagery there can't be a disconnect between what you say and what they see because um, that can happen sometimes you've got like beautiful phrasing about I don't know let's let's say um, you're in I can't think I've just got too many examples coming up. Let's say you're an engineer, but you've got a picture of your dog on your sales page. Like, I, what's what? <laughs> and, you know, like creating confusion for the people in your universe is not really going to be a compelling reason for them to buy what you're selling. So the, the more coherent everything is, the better for you. Um, also, if you can, I totally get resources are not always... Um, abundant but we've got to do what we can with what we have first impressions absolutely count having professional imagery whether it's like paid stock images so you're not going to see them on 10 other sales pages around the place or whether it's you know some really solid personal branding photos as well hey no i know you've done that i've definitely done it john lynn and sally i'm not, uh, sally's got some nice branding photos john lynn i'm not sure if you do as yet and if you don't it's on the list of things to do, I'm sure. Um, we may not want to admit it, but we all love picture books, you know, like we still have that need for the visual, we're visual creatures. So the copy may be the heart of the sales page, but the graphics engage um, the customer further. They kind of reinforce the argument that we're making, um, that we are the ones to buy from. You know, the design creates an attractive page that's more likely to convert. So not that I would say this in any other context, really, but looks matter. I'm not a superficial person, but it, like it really does make a difference to have a coherent um, message, brand, visual component to what you do. Um, ah, investing. Oh, yay. John Lynn says, thank you for the info on the picks. I'm investing heavily in a few weeks and was doubting my decision. No, no, no. They're very good. Very, very necessary. So good. Never doubt yourself. You're doing you on the right path, John Lynn. <laughs> um, let's see. The design creates an attractive page. It's more like, I already said that. Um, clean professional photography um, can be a pivotal moment in your sales. Sure. You know, um, I would add to that though as well. It's not just that it has to be professional, but it has to be you. The same way as your copy needs to be, your photos should be you as well. So if you're, you know, an outdoorsy type, go have your photo shoot outdoors, you know? Or if you're um, a swimmer, I don't know, go get in the water, who cares? Like it doesn't matter as long as it is just effortlessly you, 
you know that is what i would recommend for your photos and as far as videos go just as a little aside i'm not getting off track it's definitely important um, you know if you're worried about whether or not you can speak from the heart on a video or if you can remember the things that you're supposed to say i have a memory like a sieve personally um, there's such a thing you can get for your laptop or for your mobile. You can use a, like a teleprompter app. Um, so somebody somewhere will not notice if you've got like right underneath your camera here, there I am, um, all the words that you wanted to say, you can write it out in advance. If that's something that bothers you or something that stresses you out, that's something that I would highly recommend looking into. Just a little tip from me to you. Okay, clear calls to action next. So this is giving people opportunities to jump on in there and buy from you yes 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 so there's plenty of different ways we can we can approach that um it doesn't have to be buy now in fact in fact probably the last thing we should do is is just simply say buy now unless you're a product-based business and it's a pretty simple um transaction i suppose something like this maybe you have an application process if you're if you're looking to elevate your program perhaps maybe it's it's about finishing the sentence like i know none of these is that but quite often finishing the sentence i want to and then whatever words in on your on your call to action buttons that's a really easy way if you're struggling to get into what should i write here i want to or I'm ready to start my sales journey now, you know? Um, it's a really handy tool when you're not quite sure what to write. <laughs> um, yep, should be clear. It should be the most visually intriguing part of the page so that it attracts the eye. Um, so these are just, on this page, it's just some examples that you could um, play with in your own time. Um, there's no, there's no, right or wrong length and as you can see there's a lot of variety in how you might do that even down to like including prices not including prices trying to get into the head of the person reading it here here um, join the wait list is a different one too so it's not necessarily just jump in and buy there's lots of different ways that you can move the sales conversation forward um, it just depends on what that buying journey looks like for you. So um, I'm not going to speak to that. That's kind of a personal preference thing, but there are lots of options, rest assured. <laughs> um, okay, next one is clear pricing. So this is probably where we're talking about the features um, more than the benefits. So what's included for your money? So full VIP, VIP experience for my program, still founding members prices, but here's what you get, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, and for Nicole, here's what you get, da, 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 da. And something else to keep in mind, especially for long form sales pages is um, talking about the value as well as the price of the thing. So what they're always getting is far exceeding what you're paying. Um, and we know this because we are, experts in what we do and the value of spending an hour with you is more than your hourly rate it's also able to be calculated into what impact that has on their life beyond the session or like that's just an example but we have that all over now i'm i'm careful about using that i think i would use it sparingly um because it can be overused in certain circles, um, but it is a really strong tool to demonstrate your own worth. And that's something that can't be overstated that you're, you're worth an enormous amount as the expert in your field. And it's just how you pitch your own beliefs about that. I think is where this value um, conversation comes in. It definitely is more for um, longer form sales pages when you've got a bit more space to really get into the nitty gritty of why 
you should jump in on this one offer, okay? Um, I'll probably circle back to that in a bit, but we've got to keep rolling. Now, let's go back to social proof. So um, I think this comes down to the first question, which is who would you believe more? The person selling you the thing or the person who's really glad they bought it? You know, like someone... Uh, saying buy my thing it's so good it's great you definitely got buy it it's it's good it's good it's like okay cool why would I believe you you just want me to give you money over you know Joe down the road saying my goodness has my life changed since I bought this thing you know and here's why and here's what I really think like it's it's kind of um powerful it's very powerful it's show, uh, studies show that 84 percent of people trust online reviews um as much as they would trust their friends you know in word of mouth capacity so it's essential it's an essential component of any sales page to have somebody who, who to speak for you or so it could be testimonials it could be as simple as having logo walls of your previous clients or customers you know um or screen grabs of conversations that you've had with very happy people saying here is how working with you for instance or here's how your product affected my life for the better it's so, so powerful. I can't um, emphasize enough how important it is to have social proof on, on any sales page. Um, it just gives you so much more credibility than you saying seriously, it's great. <laughs> so keep that in mind as you go. Um, so yeah, I suppose for a product-based business, it's probably more reviews that you'd include rather than testimonials, but it's the same, 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 but different. Um, yep, yeah, let's keep rolling because um, time is marching on. Um, I've talked about it a little bit already, including a short bio is also a, th a thing. Must have your photo next to it, especially if you're in a service-based industry. Um, if somebody doesn't know who they're talking to um, or, or it doesn't connect with that actual, the face, then we're, we're really going to have a bit of a disconnect there. Um, so they want to know who they're buying from why you do what you do and why you're the best fit for what they need. Um, I've done quite a lot of talk around bios historically, so I'm not going to dive too far into it this time because I've kind of <laughs> spoken about a lot. If you need any help with your bio, just reach out through the Get It Done group. I'm more than happy to give you more information on that. Essentially what it comes down to, though, and it's, it's kind of a fine art, is writing about yourself in a way that helps them understand why you're the best person for the job. Um, so if you're talking about, I have extensive experience in X arena, you need to then expand on why that's important to them or, or what that means for them as a client of yours. Because um, that's kind of the point is that you're not writing for your own benefit, you're writing for the reader. Um, so everything, everything that we're including is, is to have this compelling argument for why you are the best person for the job, or why your products are the best products for the job. Okay, great. Um, next is epic layout. So your layout is, um, has a massive impact on whether people stay on your page and whether they buy or not, believe it or not. So you need to build it in a way that draws the reader into your world and compels them to read on. So each section, and there should be sections, I should say, needs to be an argument to read the next section and the next section and the next section. So color blocks are great. Lots of pictures with your fancy face on it, um, especially if you're a service provider. Um, if, you're, if you're a product-based business, um, having, your, having pictures of your product in use are massively helpful as well. And snippets of your key selling points. I wonder if I can, I'll show you, let's do Nicole's. So see how Nicole's is all in different blocks of information. So you can kind of wear scanners, she's got her video, we're scrollers, we want to know like, here's the salient points about um, why this is a great idea. Um, here, what else, what else, you know, like, it kind of just breaks it up. It's not quite as overwhelming to, to look at, you know. Um, so let's just go back 
Doop. There we go. So that's just an example. There's, uh, I'd be curious actually after the session if you have um, some sales pages that have really made you stop and appreciate. <laughs> or maybe that's just me because I have such a professional interest in that. <laughs> uh, and the last one, frequently asked questions. Um, probably the most important aspect of a long form sales page, you'd maybe have some brief ones on a, on a shorter sales page. Um, so this is all about addressing the uh, questions that would potentially be holding your reader back from hitting the buy button. Um, so you'd maybe have five to 10 key questions that you've thought about, you've pre-devised in your head of like, what are the things coming up most regularly for your audience? Um, what are the most common objections you face? And then how can you um, argue against them, I suppose? Or what would you say to respond to some of these fears, con concerns, what's holding them back? Um, so, uh, and just be honest, right? Because, you know, there's no point misleading someone. If, if you have something that you think people might be concerned by say I understand that you know but here's why that's not a problem <laughs> yeah so that's what I would do there um make them fun because that's always my thing is we don't need to be super serious while we're overcoming objections fun playful and aligned with your brand voice so that is what I would do with those FAQs. And again, if you need more help with that, please go to the Get It Done group and we will brainstorm with you. So there you go. Happy selling. Oh, dismiss. Happy selling. That's it. Um, any questions on what we talked about so far? Sales pages. Nah, cool. Um, any fears or concerns? about what's to come for you creating your sales page or if I instilled confidence. <laughs> so, so says Hena, fair enough. <laughs> Good, that's a start. At least we've got a bit of Jason Momoa. Very helpful. Now the challenge is doing it, yes. But um, progress over perfection is what I always um, say. So let's go with that. Cool, all right. So that is part one of our session. Thank you, Jason, for your lovely, happy face. Um, let's leave this behind and oh, exit. There we go. Okay, so let's jump into lovely Sally's brand new website. Um, yeah, I'm doing the right thing here. So now we are into copy collab territory. Um, so Sally is a celebrant based in Brisbane and she is at work right now. So we're just going to kind of play it by ear a bit. I'm not sure if Sally will even be able to see um, or hear the words that, I, that are coming out of my mouth. So we're just going to have to wing it a bit. So Sally, 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 this is about to launch. I would be putting um, your name here as well. And probably, so um, Sally Thomas or Sally Ann Thomas, um, I'd be putting that and then like a, a colon, your Morton Bay celebrant that is up. Cool, still sound on, excellent. Um, so I would be putting your name here. So it's, it's instantly recognizable. And for me, um, like this is a beautiful picture of flowers. I don't get an instant connection to you as the celebrant. Like I realize that you've got your picture, picture right there, um, but this is a thing that people are going to land on first and that's their first impression. And these are very pleasant flowers, but they don't tell me anything about you. So I would be sticking, if you can, if you have one, you know, a picture here of you delivering a ceremony and everyone having a wonderful time. Like if that's possible, that's what I would do first. Um, because then that's that powerful first impression of you doing what you do and everyone loving it. Jonlin says, love, love, love that picture of you. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. Look at that smile. Who doesn't want to work with Sally, you know? So that's what I would do. I don't know, like I'm not a web designer. I don't know how to make it beautiful. I just have ideas that uh, someone else can deal with how to execute, right? So, <laughs> um, and then I would probably pop here. Hi, I'm Sally as the... Um, the headline and then I'm 
North Brisbane's best love celebrant you can actually afford. I thought maybe that's just a different play of, of how we can work with price and, and have that connection with you still. Because there's something that's missing for me, Sally, is, is your, you know, your personality um, in, in this line in particular, surrounded by Kipper Ring Reception Bay, most of my neighbors are not planning weddings that cost tens of thousands. Like I, I, I like, I totally get the vibe here. I'm all for it. Um, I have three ceremony packages, one of which I'm sure will meet you. Um, hmm, sure will meet you at your price point and can certainly tailor one to your needs. I wonder if we need to have both conversations about price. Like, I know we've talked about this in advance. So, you know, like, I totally, totally understand why we are focusing on price as well and why we're talking about it. Um, I have three ceremony packs, one of which I'm sure will give you the ceremony of your dreams or something, you know, like maybe less cheesy than that. But do, yeah, I think the point has been made. We don't need to labor it. So, like, give you the ceremony of your dreams <laughs> but better something something in that way in that direction I would probably say um because I mean like Sally your personality is brilliant you know you've got such a warm humorous personality I want that to shine through everything um great thought and planning go into every ceremony I perform I don't doubt it look at that happy face I want to get Sally married <laughs> The, the typo in the last sentence. Oh, and I perform. Yeah, probably. Luckily, this isn't published yet. Thanks, John Lynn. Um, yep, not published yet. So we will, I'm sure, erase the errant and <laughs> um, services. What did I say here? Oh, yes. So be careful, Sally. I realize this is still in draft form. So take it with a pinch of salt, of course. Um, and you can tell me to shut up too, because I'll, I'll cop that. Be careful between my and our, like plural and singular. Um, we, we've got to be consistent with that. View our packages. I realize this is probably just like web design input rather than your input, but I would stick with my everywhere. Um, in just in case it's something that you weren't sure about. If you're totally sure about it, let's move on. <laughs> um, yeah, just always use my because you are the, the heart and soul of this business. And I expect you don't necessarily have a team. That's the web design. And I hate when she talks about me in the third person. All that will go. Happy days. I will move forward. <laughs> um, vow renewals, uh, th like this, everything was great. I loved reading it. Now this one just had, I wanted to change this to more of a positive um, I mean, not that it's mine to change, but you know what I mean? I, I could flip this around quite easily. And instead of it's never too late, it almost feels like, crap, we're running out of time. Oh my God, we gotta, we got to get on with it. What about it's always the right time? Oh, that line sucks. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> um, it's always the right time. It's just like, yeah, let's do it. Anytime's right. Let's do that. And she says, nice for anyone who's watching um, along. Cool. So that's kind of what I thought of there. Testimonials. Yep. So Sally's got the memo on social proof. Always, always include it everywhere. Okay. So that is page one. Services. Ah. Oh. oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, this could just be that this is still in development, but I would be having some kind of pleasant intro here. Um, a witty and heartfelt intro. I feel like that, Sally, would be your absolute bread and butter to do, you know, a couple of paragraphs, uh, not a couple of paragraphs, a couple of sentences, maybe one paragraph about, um, you know, why your services are unique and uh, beyond, like we've, we've, we've dealt with price and that's going to come through everywhere. But what, like, what is it about your services, you know, that is special? Because, uh, like, clearly you put your warmth and your humour and your unique um, worldview uh, through it. So uh, ask about my backyard discount. Interesting. I, I like that. I'm like, oh, what's that? I want to know what that is. Um, not getting married, thankfully. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so I do some kind of intro there. 
And then I wondered about budget priced legals only. I wondered if something like everything you need and nothing you don't might be useful here. Um, I don't know. I just like, can we make it sound just a touch more romantic, even though, yes, we are. Yeah, now nah, the package is called just, just, just do it. Just I do it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> is it? Yeah. So web developer brain versus word brains, I guess. So an affordable personal ceremony, the spoken unique. Oh, and um, again, this probably isn't new, but tailored, different tailored um, for the web developer when the time comes. And that was all I had for that. Now let's look at the about. There's Sally, 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 Sally. Um, I would still be talking first person, which it sounds like you've already addressed. Um, I do it. Oh, I get it. I get the package name now. It only took me an extra minute or two. <laughs> if you're checking out the website. So this kind of, um, I think we need to go deeper here. They'll tell you they're warm, caring, funny, organized, reliable, creative, inclusive. You know what? We all are. I, like the point is, is a solid point. Um, so I'd like to know why I can trust you. What makes you different? You know, like a, same as with the services, like what's, what's, what, what's different about Sally? If, if all of these characteristics are, are common and that's great, so they should be, what's different about Sally? You know, um, we all are. You don't come and celebrate if you don't like people and aren't particularly nice. You could be the chick that just doesn't like people very much, but does it anyway, you know, <laughs> as a point of difference. I don't know. Like what I would like to see is why you're differentiating, how you're differentiating yourself. Um, and obviously, yes, we've, you've, I know in your notes you're pointing out she hasn't spelled your name particularly accurately, which is a, I'm sure that's making you twitch. Um, uniquely designed ceremonies for all those special occasions and milestones. Please take out the, the capitals here. Um, that's my editor brain, can't help it. Naming ceremonies, welcome, adopted to, like these are cool. I would maybe put this as a bulleted list. Just easier to read, okay? Um, and Sally Ann says, oh, what's this? Is this a blog? I hope so. Is this your musings on the world? <gasps> yes. Oh, that's a, that's a question I had for you as well, Sally, was, yeah, this is cool. I can't wait to read all of these blogs, actually. I'm very excited to read that. Um, do you, have you included an SEO strategy in this? Um, yes or no? Just missed a chunk because the phone, damn phones. <laughs> um, is there an SEO strategy? In, in what you're doing uh, so far or not yet? Possibly. SEO is part of why I'm getting a new website. Okie dokie. Um, so maybe you and I then can talk later about how to work in Morton Bay Celebrancy, how to work in your keywords. Can't drive the old one from the back end. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, that's obviously why you would have a blog is to to keep your keywords rolling strongly and keep traffic coming to your website. Um, contact. Yep. So that's kind of the the broader strokes of what I'm getting on first impressions. I realise we've kind of ah oh, thanks, Hannah. I've almost got to run too. Um, so. Sally, is there anything specific based on what I've said so far or anything that you wish I'd touched on that I haven't as yet? These are kind of broad impressions. Um, I'm a genius, totally. <laughs> um, it's just minor tweaks that it's just going to make it um, even more effective than it already is. You know, like it's a beautiful thing. I want to see your face everywhere. I want to see couples enjoying their time with you. Um, we'll need the replay to make notes. Yes, I did. I tried to find um, captions for you, um, but I could not. But luckily it sounds like you've had your, your sound on, which has been very helpful because um, I haven't learned the art of interpretive dance yet. 
next next workshop perhaps <laughs> cool all right so thanks everybody for popping along i have a call starting in two minutes don't forget that we have the group um, where you can ask questions and drop ideas and interact and be all communal like we were talking about earlier as far as having more than one voice to listen to it's always very powerful and of course there is the get it done check-in membership that is essentially what i just did with sally but every week so that you're always making progress. So don't forget that that's an opportunity for you to do what you do and do it well. I hope you have a fabulous week, month, year, life. Who cares? Take your pick, have it all. Um, I'm going to move on and get onto my She Mentors calls. Thank you so much to everybody who was on live and everybody who's watching on the replay. Thanks for joining. See you soon.